GM Farcaster. It is Monday, August 5th, and you are here with Nonish Prof and my guest co-host, Jake, who isn't on, so we're going to just see a speaking blue blue bubble, um, but that'll, that'll all make sense in a minute. <laughs> I'm very excited to have you here. How are you doing today, Jake? I'm doing great. It's uh, It's been a little bit of a rough 24 hours for you and for me and for everyone. So uh, we'll we'll try to do a little disaster episode here and, and hopefully make everyone feel a little bit better by the end. Exactly. Yeah, we're having a, a rough day here. Um, <laughs> we both have been traveling back from base camp. You just got home and I know it took you about like 30 hours or something crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that might have been somebody else. I can't remember. Yeah, no, um, that was that was me. Was that you? I've been I've slept in like three more hotels than I intended to and took about four more flights and trains than I wanted to. So I'm home now and I know you're still in the middle of it, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be a common experience. Yeah, it's been um, a little, little crazy. Um, so for me, it was, you know, first flight was canceled. Second flight just got canceled, but I made it. So I made it from Palm Springs to Denver and now I'm doing another hotel. So I've been uh, doing all the hotels. Um, I did post that I love hotels because I was kind of tired of the Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like that didn't mean I wanted to stay in another one tonight. <laughs> so no, but yeah. here home, we are. Home beats, home beats everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to be home. But we had a great, you know, it was a great experience. Um, I loved, you know, being there. It was a great energy. But I am ready to be home. I see Alina in the chat um that she oh she's finally made it into the chat great to see you alina and she is just getting back from base camp also and alina i don't know if you noticed but you are again the cover art because <laughs> i loved it and it was perfect for this episode when happy base campers return to the crypto market and it's the meme of the guy with the pizzas walking into everything on fire uh so yeah so congrats alina you're back you're back uh you're back on the cover um so that's kind of where we're going to start too is with the macro level oops that's not where we're going to start hold on uh with everything that's going on with the markets and i don't think we need to rehash but it is a bit of a bit of a shit show is, is not, crypto is crypto down uh, uh no i don't think so no <laughs> I haven't checked. I haven't checked the prices in a couple of days. I, I just thought everything's kind of status quo. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Have you checked the timeline? <laughs> no, oh, actually. No, I've been crazy. I've been on seven flights, so I missed. You know, I missed all that. <laughs> here's here's where you get all the news. The memes channel. So just go to the memes channel, and that will tell you everything you need to know about what is happening. And right now, it's uh, it's a little crazy. So we're. Uh, it's it's absolutely nuts and uh i the speaking of also warpcast is having some challenges so some of the things aren't loading for me today today but uh sparks have put something that said you know what is this when do we get to actually sell high because <laughs> i keep <laughs> buying low i've got that part down <laughs> i'm really good at the buying low thing <laughs> it's the selling high part that i'm having a challenge um so yeah we're we're uh this is actually a very large macro moment, you know, problem in the financial sector where it was caused by some, some, you know, financial management in Japan. Uh, so we're, we're having, we got hit with the crypto, crypto market crashing this weekend, and now we're seeing it reflected in the stock market. So we were just, we were just early. We were just a little early. Monday opened up and uh, there it went. So we're, we've got a little bit of a Black Monday happening. Um, some people are calling it Red Monday, so for the candles. But here we are, and hopefully, you know, we'll see a quick recovery. But uh, right now, it's it's not looking great. It's not looking great. So head to the memes channel. It will it will make your life a lot better. Uh, I highly recommend it, and that's where you should be living now. <laughs> the next few days. Uh, in other news, so undefined tried to bring back animated PFPs and uh, they look great. And you had an option to animate your PFP. And uh, then this happened. Warpcast degraded performance right now investigating. <laughs> this is this is a story in three acts. And then 
Uh, no more animated PFPs, except I believe they are working on the web, but they are no longer working on the app because they do just crush it completely. So that is why you're not going to see them on mobile, but you may still see them on web. But I did find this quite amusing. Um, you do not have an animated PFP, except you kind of do right now, Jake. You kind of have like your 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 little blue your blue dot is uh, is talking. So I love that. Yeah, on the streams we get a little bit of animation, but uh, on on Farcaster it's just the uh, the stationary blue dot for now. The stationary blue dot, which we're going to explain all about the blue dot in just a moment. Uh, and there's been also a lot of um, it's kind of funny because even preceding this dip and this or crash or whatever you want to call it, uh, there's been a little bit of agitation on the timeline, and. Uh, so this was from Dan. Why are Farcaster builders so optimistic when X, Y, and Z bad things exist? And his response, my brother, bad is the default. It's entropy. Failure is the most likely outcome when building something new. If you're not a definite optimist, you have no chance in making it happen. Even if you're a rational person, you have to be willing to suspend disbelief just enough to make the bet despite all the bad. And then it's just weak week of week, pro I'd say week after week progress, and try not to die, mostly figuratively, <laughs> for years. So I did love this kind of thinking, and I think it also really connects well with what's happening in the markets, because you do have a lot of folks who panic, and they panic sell. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to take profit, you have to make sure you've taken enough to sort of sustain through these dips. But also, trying not to panic sell before you absolutely have to is important as well. But when you're building, it's the same kind of thing. It's thinking about like, even if things aren't going exactly right, keep going, just keep going, just survive. So, and Jake, I think for you as a builder, uh, you probably can see and relate to this as well. Yeah, there's like a few related things here um, to Dan's post. One is uh, Jesse posted, I think, earlier today as well, this uh, saying that I think comes from Brian over the years, which is basically like you don't want to get over exuberant when the prices are up and you don't want to be like super depressed when the prices are down. Another one is um, Bezos has something like this as well. It's like when the price is up 3x, you know, Amazon's not 3x better. And when the price is down 50%, Amazon isn't 50% worse. The price is always going to sort of like, you know, swing each way and the other, but the actual progress of the company is, you know, it's not necessarily linear. Like we've seen with Farcaster, Farcaster had like a huge step up when like frames came out and it's never, you know, Bitcoin is the same way in terms of price over the years, it's going to be volatile and there's gonna be like big steps up and then flat line for a while and steps down. But you just can't really track company progress or asset progress or anything like that to, um, you know, the price because it's just too, it's just too volatile and it doesn't really make any sense. So um, yeah, yeah I've always, I've always said that, that as well. Like, you know, this too shall pass. It's the good and the bad. It's not just the bad. That's good. Yeah. Pass. It's the good too, you know? So I did see that post from uh, Jesse. I didn't get a chance to pull it for, for the show, but it's, yeah, I thought it was, you know, right, right on point and really kind of relates to this, even though this was a little bit, um, you know, Dan was kind of talking about something else, but it really does connect all together. So you have to, you know, keep going, but also, um, be re be realistic too that you know these things are going to happen and there's going to be a lot of challenges when you're building something new. Yeah, my version more generally is like um, this, like the hook that I used to kind of remember is like the worst times get better and the best times get worse, and yeah. um, that's just a fact. Granted, you know we can't necessarily say as a fact like today is the worst time, so it's factually going to get better. But when it starts getting better, you know that's you've gone past the worst time, and so it's useful to remember for those bad times. I think, and then. I try not to think of that quote too much when the best times are happening. You don't want to always be expecting things to get worse or whatever, but I kind of, uh, you know, use it when things are dark because if it does feel like it is kind of one of the worst times, um, sort of a hopeful, hopeful little hook to remember. We have a little uh, note in the chat here. Um, darkest darks are next to the lightest lights it's from uh, Thompson Art. So love that. Yeah, very true. Very true. Um, a couple other notes here. This was from Dan also. Again, it's been a little spicy. It's been a little spicy on the timeline. Uh, Merkle just helps its friends. How many times do I have to repeat that most users and developers on Farcaster did not know Varun or myself prior to joining Farcaster? 
in some cases have become friends because they stuck around early when no one else cared. We've spent years with these people socializing on this network. Don't conflate something that's earned with built with cronyism. Uh, and I think that's really important. Uh, and I think you've seen a few other people echo, the, echo it. And I think Cassie said it best. And I think this is a great example uh, where she said, when I joined Farcaster, I was neither an employee of Merkel, nor did I know Dan or Varun. Varun finally got me to onboard after multiple attempts. Conversations led to what I could do for the project, and I became a part of the team. I may not always agree with every decision, but I can definitely confirm firsthand there is no help Merkel's friends bias. And for those who know why I quit CB, Coinbase, they'd know just as well I wouldn't stick around at Merkel if that were the case. So I thought that was uh, probably the best response to sort of that thinking. And I know for me, like there's, you know, this feeling about the auto mod where certain people got a lot of followers. I definitely benefited a little bit from that as well, but I did not know them. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't that it was just that I was here contributing and they sort of picked sort of those people that were most active and that's how that came about. So I think that, you know, a lot of times these things are a little bit overblown and, you know, just, just chill, just chill people, just chill. Uh, and then something else here that's kind of related as well. PSA, if you have feedback for us, re Farcaster that you don't feel comfortable sharing directly, consider reaching out to someone, you know, I follow interact with, see if they'd be willing to share it, but stepping back, here's the best way to offer feedback directly preferred. One, public feedback, expect a potential reply. If it's small, we'll give you a short answer. If it's longer or larger, there's going to be a lot more weight into how it's communicated and how accurate it is. Are you up to date on everything that's going on? Two, private feedback, send me a DC. I respond to most of them. Avoid a wall of text cold message as it's hard to parse. Also usually good if we have some public back and forth history first. In other words, and I know you probably do something similar. If you're looking through your DCs and you have a lot of them, you kind of have to, you know, triage a little bit. And, but if it's feedback, and even if you start it with that, but if he knows who you are and you've mentioned something before publicly, he's more likely to dig in. So asking for, they're asking for feedback, but also to, you know, make sure it's productive. Um, one last thing sort of in this section of various uh, things that have been going on uh, with sort of like the spiciness on the timeline from Dan, why would you build on Farcaster frames, actions, clients, if Merkle Warpcast will just clone it if successful? Outside of trading, Coinbase Uniswap, there's no successful at scale revenue generating crypto based business today Two, The biggest constraint for all crypto app growth is users. There are not enough people using in crypto today. The market needs to expand based on increasing the amount of consumer utility provided. Three, our goal with Farcaster and Warpcast is to get enough scale where developers are able to build meaningful businesses without having to onboard more people to Farcaster and or crypto themselves. Four, separately, if your product is really just a feature of another product, your best bet at building as a business around it is finding the top 1% power users of said feature and giving them as many bells and whistles and knobs as they're willing to pay, pay you for. And five, we actively try to support other Farcaster apps in the ecosystem, which is absolutely true. Uh, and also, I think the other thing to think about too is that you know building on top of Farcaster doesn't have to be just developing clients. It can be many things. Um, I think you know it's integration into Farcaster. It's even just using that social graph as a base to launch something. Um, that's, you know, what we're doing here in terms of GM Farcaster and supporting builders and what people are building, as well as providing updates on what's happening, all of that relates. And I did see this also from Balaji, which, uh, was nice to see. Dan is correct. Products will be built on Farcaster. I want to use it as the social graph, social login for crypto for both online and offline worlds, which is different from all pre-existing use cases of other networks. Twitter login is closest, but it's nowhere near as open. So um, Jake, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that and you're, you're building on Farcaster in your way. And we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. So what are your thoughts about why, you know, why build on Farcaster in terms of, um, you know, for any, anyone who might be building a project? 
Yeah, I mean, base colors, like we're not directly building on Farcaster, but we're definitely like Farcaster first. And um, it's super beneficial because you basically get this like seed of a community. Um, for other apps, it might be more useful in that like you can literally create, you know, an Instagram or whatever, and then or TikTok like Dracula and people's following, you know, graphs come into it. And so like you start, you don't have to start fresh on every new social network that you start. Um, for us, it's more so like, okay, uh farcaster and and warpcast to some degree have sort of like done this hard work of curating an initial community from day one that was like really strong very like builder biased and um just generally good people like i mean obviously that's like sort of a stereotypical overstatement but um when you look at sort of like the the engagement you know look at comments and stuff on on farcaster on warpcast it's just a generally more like benefit of the doubt, more like civil, less dunking culture than um, than Twitter. And so obviously Dan and team had a large part in in at least seeding that, if not sort of maintaining that over time. Um, granted, it's not all like completely within their control. And so um, it's sort of like a good community if you filter that down to like, okay, we're going to launch base colors. We're going to explicitly launch on Farcaster first, not just for the initial launch, but like every subsequent feature then you sort of like get that message across and you start to build your own community as sort of like a sub community from that larger community. And you sort of already have filtered out a lot of like, you know, maybe less desirable, like lower quality folks that you don't want to seed your own thing. So I can sort of do some curation. Like when I go and try to do a base colors meetup, I, uh, this is actually a super useful, um, sort of, you know, thing that we did with, with Farcaster, we were able to basically build a base colors map of all base colors nft owners by cool. finding um you know people who had set their locations on farcaster so it's just a subset of like the total you know base colors nft holders i forget how many we have right now but like maybe somewhere around fifteen thousand. and uh you cut that to like how many of those fifteen thousand have farcaster accounts and then you cut that to how many of them have set a location and you still have a substantial group that you can then see and it's like okay we want to do a meetup in new york so this is what we did a couple of weeks ago like i sort of you know, parsed that list, got the New Yorkers who had base colors who were on Warpcast, and then just manually went through, you know, however many it was profiles and was like, okay, this guy's kind of like, you know, posting, you know, garbage every day, but like th these people are like legit. And so I'm going to create a group chat with these 15 people or whatever it was, like 10 of them were able to come. And we had like a nice first mm -hmm. meetup that we just wouldn't have been able to really do any of that without Farcaster. So it's super useful. And I think even for, you know, these social network type uh, clients that are building on top of Farcaster, it's even more useful. Um, but in general, obviously, I think we're all sort of rooting for Farcaster to continue to grow and continue to be quality because it's Definitely. just a great way for people to kind of seed uh, the network on whatever it is that they're building. I think that's such a great point. And that's, this is, you're like a perfect example of you're building something it is not a Farcaster client. It's not, you know, it doesn't have major integrations it could be done without farcaster but what the farcaster social graph gives you is a jump start and it gives you like tools that you can use to really bring that community together that you're not going to get anywhere else so what a you know that that's just really speaks to that why you know why would you build on farcaster and it really does all the other tools and all the other builders that are working on it all of these things are going together like you know airstack and being able to pull information um and be able to pull like all that you know data to do those meetups and things like that so yeah there's so many different things that um i think you know make it such a great place to build and not only from the tech side and the things you can you know pull from the social graph but also the people and yeah. the willingness to you know try things give feedback um jump in and be supportive and all those you know that founder builder energy that runs through it is special and you're not you're not going to find it anywhere else and i think with Basecamp, we really saw that as well uh you know with all those builders in one room at the same time and and you know figuring out you know how can i help you do this and, and what do you need over here i think there was such a great energy there and i want to kind of share this as well you were featured on the bait on the big stage um your project was featured uh base colors so this was your thank you to anary so thank you anary for the on stage shout out at base camp specifically great to be cited as a project making continual improvements because that's a 
big part of my approach in life. Base colors keep shipping and we keep improving. We are not a one and done. And I love that. So I want to shift over here really and kind of give a basics of what is base colors. Can you um, chat a little bit about that? And let's talk about, you know, what it is. Yeah, sure. So uh, fundamentally, base colors is the NFT collection for every color on the internet. Also, sort of just like every digital color, basically. So there's this, uh, for people who don't know, but if you've ever picked like any color for anything, I don't know if you're a designer, or you've just done anything that required you to pick a color on the internet and Figma or, or wherever it might be, you're basically picking a color from this RGB model. Uh, and that's the hex code that you'll see, which is like hashtag, and then there's six digits. And when I say digit, that's any value between zero and nine or A and F. Um, so there's, it's like a 16 digit system as opposed to, you know, zero to nine would be a 10 digit system. And, um, so six, you know, digits of 16 possible characters results in a system that includes 16,777,216 colors. And I've been, saying, I've been saying that big number <laughs> quite, quite a lot recently. Um, I know, I've heard you say, and you just rattle it off. So yeah, yeah so I, I'm trying to like get my time down to where it's like, I can say it like super fast and people are like, whoa, but uh, for now it's like, it still takes like, I don't have to think about it, but it's just a lot of numbers. Um, so anyway, it's this collection. There's, there's a one of one NFT basically for each of those colors. And so you can imagine, you know, the color black, which is the hex code 000000. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 um, that's going to probably be considered pretty, you know, valuable. There are, people use the word like rare. Um, I don't, I try not to use the word rare cause they're all technically the same rarity. Like they're all one of one, but there's only one black and it's pure black. And if you click that blue address there, it'll bring you to OpenSea, um, where you can see that the owner of pure black is Phil. Uh, I guess he's got it purple in his Dow. purple Dow, purple Dow wallet. Purple Dow 15. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so he minted that, you know, I forget if it was like the second or third color minted overall, uh, but Phil was instrumental to the the launch of this in the first place, and uh, naturally wanted to uh, you know make his claim on pure black from the get go. I, I minted the first color as my pure blue, which you see here, the you know the blue dot that I've used for years, which is zero 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 ff. Um, so the first thing to kind of understand is the collection for every color. Every color is a one of one. The second thing that we sort of added on top of that is. Uh, every color has a name. So for this one, for example, if you go down, scroll down a little bit to traits, exactly, you see blue there. Um, so on basecolors.com, the owner of a given color can name all of their colors, uh, but you can only name your color a name that hasn't already been taken. So the colors are one of one and the names are one of one. And suddenly you get this sort of interesting dynamic where like someone could perceive, you know, Coca-Cola red to be somewhat valuable because it's the legit hex code for Coca-Cola red. But then right. separately, someone could just go and get like some random shade of pink that doesn't have like really any inherent value of any kind. But if they get the name bubblegum and it's like a nice shade of pink that looks like bubblegum, you know, it might not be the most valuable color in the world, but someone might prefer that to a different shade of pink that's like pink 1756 Farcaster or like some, you know, non-special name basically. Um, so there's sort of like two uh, elements that could be potentially viewed as valuable there. And then there's actually a third, which is beyond like sort of the look of the color or whether it's associated with a brand or something like that. And beyond the name, the hex codes themselves, this is actually something that I wasn't really thinking about prior to launch, but uh, soon after we launched, people went and got these sort of seemingly valuable hex codes. So one guy got like coffee, which is C-O-F-F-E-E. -E, and you can sort of like make words out of the hex codes. Uh, oh, coffee cool. happens to be like a, a light blue. So it's like kind of weird, but you know, it, it's still like might be desirable to some people. Of course, people are going to go out there and they got like 42069 and like every different combination of 42069 that you can imagine. And, uh, you know, those aren't the colors that are like sort of first on my list, but people will do, uh, you know, what they want to do. And it's been super cool to see uh, what kind of colors people want, you know, get going and getting your brand colors is like a common trade or colors of your personal website, things like that. Um, so it's, we, we've got off to a really cool start. It's been a ton of fun and uh, I'm working really hard to just make things better and and try to launch some new cool stuff and right now we're really focused as well on sort of collaborating with people in uh in the base ecosystem people on Farcaster and it's been you know a ton of fun doing that so Mike on Farcaster went and launched color punks a week or two ago Ooh. which was you mint a black and white punk and then you can use any of your base colors to color it in 
That's cool. And there's so many base colors, but you can launch a collection with, you know, in this case, it was only a thousand color punks. So there's like, you know, scarcity there. And uh, people are really digging that. And we've got a few others in the works. Um, so it's been a ton of fun. And I'm just uh, kind of excited to see where things go and, and just, you know, it is mo really motivated fun. to keep going. It's really fun, too, because you can um, do like the dropper thing and get the exact color. So this color of purple is the GM Farcaster color that we use like in our branding. Yeah. So I pulled it specifically and then named it GM. And then uh, there's a few other things. Like I pulled this one. Um, this is this pink right here is the noun flamingo head. Hmm. It comes from that. So that's why it's called flamingo. So nice. I, I feel like, the flamingo. Name, I yeah, feel yeah. like on that purple, the name GM should age pretty well. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, so I had fun. I had so much fun doing that. I thought it was just, it's just a really fun thing. And I think this one, I forget what I named this one. This is, oh, this is also June. Never mind. That's not it. Um, there was, there was just a lot of fun in doing these different colors and different naming. Uh, really, really fun. Oh, this is um, what is based in blue. That's what it was. I was like, there we go. That one? Based in blue. Uh, so I was having all kinds of, all kinds of fun with these. And I pulled that blue from base as well, like something that you'd done. So uh, I was like just having fun pulling it. But one of the things you did that I thought was very smart was uh, you like targeted some folks on Farcaster and sent them a color and named it after them. So this one is uh, Nounish Red. And that is, my, that is the one that you sent to me. And it comes right from my PFP. Exactly. So, and it's very, very cool. So, if I actually let me show, I think it should come up. It matches my PFP completely. Yeah, it was so a um, it was a highly manual launch strategy, uh, but I think it really paid off, and it was certainly a lot of uh, of fun, fun to do it. Yeah, yeah it was I think really fun. Um, it got my attention. Oh, you named a color, and it was because it was exactly the color it really got my attention. I was like, oh, that is cool. That's really cool. And I want to go in and name some name some colors now. So I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I mean, if you think of like the alternative, like do the same exact thing that I did, but without the personalization and with a different NFT project, it's like, okay, someone sends you like, you know, a, a tiger or like a, you know, a bear PFP or something. And it's like, you know, some collection you haven't heard of. Like if someone sends me, you know, a board ape, like a legit one, then yeah. it's worth, you know, however many thousands of dollars, then sure, like, I'm, I'm very happy about that gift. But otherwise, if it's like some new just getting off the ground project where there's not a particular value for the NFT, and it's not personalized or anything, it's like, kind of a spam message. Um, yeah, totally. But when you get something that's a color that you recognize, hopefully, whether it's from, you know, your PFP or your company or your personal website or whatever, and it has a name which can actually guide you to what it's from. So, you know, even if someone just tweeted something or casted something recently, it's not like from their personal website, but maybe there's a color to it. Maybe they, you know, uh, were just casting about how much they love like the Rocky Mountains and you pulled like a nice shade of like purple or black or purple or blue from the picture and then like name it Rocky Mountains. They'd be like, oh, wow, like he really, you yeah, know, saw cool. that I was in the Rockies recently or something like that. Um, so it was, it was a really nice gift. And then it actually informed sort of the third feature that we added on top of just buying and naming colors, which was gifting colors. Um, and so now you can go, if you have a color and you go to basecolors.com and you look at your colors, there's this big gift button that you can click and you can easily send a color to, you know, someone who, you know, their ETH address or whatever, or their ENS name. But alternatively to that, we wanted to build, we wanted to build everything in a way that literally like anyone could do, like, you don't have to be crypto native at all. So if you come to the site without a wallet, you create a smart wallet using face ID in about 10 seconds. You can then pay for your first color with credit card. So you don't even need to, need to load it with crypto or anything. The naming of the color is a free transaction and we sponsor gas. So again, you don't need any crypto. And then if you want to go and send a gift, you can click the gift button and there's this gift with link option that just generates like a standard link as if you were sending someone oh, a link to cool. anything. And um, you just text them the link and they just click the link and they're good to go. And it's like this super easy process. It's actually using the same technology that Coinbase uses for the you know, text USDC sort of feature that they have in their wallet. Cool. Um, and so the goal is to have the, the website be totally engageable for everyone. But, you know, I'm not uh, 
blind to the fact that a lot of our initial users will be crypto natives. And, and hopefully those are the sorts of people that can then go and, and spread it to their non-crypto friends. But I think um, it's been a time, you know, I've onboarded so many people on chain using base colors that really cool. you know I've been friends with for a long time. And, and like, I've been into crypto for a long time, but I just never really had that thing that I felt that I could share with them to onboard them. I, I told them to go to Coinbase and, you know, buy Bitcoin and buy Ethereum or maybe some Solana or whatever, but I never actually got them on chain because it just wasn't really feasible. Um, and now a smart wallet and something very simple yeah. and easy to understand like this, it's it's a walk in the park and it's been um, really great to be able to you know do that with my own product. So and you and Moshicam are both doing some cool things like that where it's very, uh, it, it's not, it's going to be very attractive to non-crypto folks. And I, and I think the easier that you make it for the onboarding process, there you go. You know, it's going to be, it, and I loved hearing everything that they're doing with smart wallets and sort of the development there. I think that we're going to see a, a lot more opportunity for folks to kind of come into the space and have it be a lot less friction uh, yeah. in doing so. And this, that's a great example. Um, I love this uh, post that you had here, the joy of receiving one, one color as a gift, personally selected and named. And this was from Palohead, who uh, received a gift at Bitcoin, just sent me the base color for my FID. He even gave it, he gave it my name, grab his far card to get amazing surprises as well. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and all this like sort of, sort of gifting things. And I did also just show um, Tori, who's in the chat right now, dropped in her, uh, the um, hex code, and I popped that in there so we could see uh, her, her color. But she said she still has to name it. So Tori, you got to go give it a name. <laughs> it's time to give it a name. Yeah, that, uh, that color is that color's begging for a name. That's a nice little yeah. yellow there, maybe a little green involved and uh, yeah. just, just waiting to be named. Yep. So you got to go give that a name. So chat, help Tori name this. Uh, she needs she needs some help there. Um, I think this is it's a it's really fun. It's just a very fun thing. Like I was thinking today, like even we could be doing um, you know colors that represent that that day. So obviously this would be a little dark. <laughs> uh -huh. But since black is already gone, yeah, Phil, Phil needs to. Phil needs to rename his color to just Black August Monday. 5th, 2024. Yeah, August, like that. <laughs> August 5th. I'm just going to call it August 5th from now on. Um, but I thought, I just think it's, it's a really fun project. Um, it's something definitely worth checking out and sort of diving in. And I think I was, I was just thinking today, I'm like, I should go just play around and name some more colors. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so we have, and the gifting, the gifting is so good. Like you saw, it's so um, smart. yeah, it's you, fun. You, you know, the that tweet, which was the guy like getting the gift from someone else. And so I've obviously sent a lot of gifts, and a lot of people have received gifts from yeah. me. But the sending of gifts, you know, not quite as popular thus far. But if you try it once, it's like almost addicting. It's like you know, the colors cost. I'm used to saying you know around three dollars, but today it's probably like uh, you know closer to two dollars. <laughs> Exactly. You and sale uh, on ba on base colors today. You didn't the, I didn't even know. Yeah, the colors, it's a 30% off discount. You know, we uh we didn't necessarily control it, but it, it is what it is. So uh you know this you go you got one way to look at this right now. I mean, like what else can you do? You know, so yeah. I think that's a great way to look at it. Lots of things are on sale. Go get them. <laughs> and and like how many, you know, how many gifts that are literally less than three dollars can you send that are like actually meaningful actually create like an emotionally positive response there's like very few things they usually require a good deal of effort so like you know you send someone a letter that costs you mm -hmm. you know the piece of paper which is trivial it's basically nothing or a postcard or whatever it's even a postcard is probably more expensive than a color um but whatever it is like the the value comes from from what you're writing but here it's like it's not even that much effort you just you know mint the thing give it a name and send it over and you're good to go and you don't need to send it in the mail or anything like that. It's, I think it's an interesting digital gift. I, I don't, I'm not really familiar with any digital gift that is as cheap to buy and as personal and meaningful to receive. Um, you know, if anyone has any ideas, I'd love to hear about them because there's probably things that we can learn, but, um, it's really, it, it is really a meaningful gift for whatever reason. Um, I mean, not for whatever reason, I kind of know why, but, um, it, it's cool. And so receiving them is great. Sending them, in my view, it's you know it's even more fun. So people should try it out. And I love gifting things, so I know that's going to be something I'm going to be doing. Um, and I was I was just thinking as I'm so I've got my my mug that I picked up yesterday. I picked, nope this morning at the airport at Palm Springs, 
because I love the architecture there. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. And I need to go like pull one of these colors and, and name it, name it uh, Palm Springs or something. Yeah, um, I need to, uh, I think the way to do, I need to like facilitate that a little bit on the website, but I think the way probably is to have an upload image button, like simply like right, right where the go. other color picker options are. And um, people can upload an image and then use the, uh, the eyedropper that you mentioned earlier to, uh, to figure out the color without having to, you know, leave basecolors.com or, or do. That would be cool. Cause I think the way I was doing it was Canva. I think I was doing it like in Canva yeah. and pulling like using their dropper, pulling the num, pulling the hex code and then putting the hex code in. Yeah. I think that's the, what I did. The like power law winning things that people are having to go outside of basecolors.com to do for the sake of, you know, using base colors in an interesting way are, are things that we probably want to pull into the site. I want to keep it like super minimalist, but yeah. um, I think having an eyedropper on site is the move and having an image upload to be able to use that is probably the best way to do it. I think that would be great. Yeah, it would definitely make it a lot easier. But I was like, okay, I know I can figure this out. And it just took me like a, you know, a little bit to like, oh, okay, now I know how I can do it. Just go to, because I was like, how did he get the exact color of my PFP? I got to figure this out. Uh -huh. So I was like, okay, Canva, I'll get the number. Um, so that, yeah, that works, but it works great to do it that way as well. Uh, and that way you can get like a meaningful color that's, you know, meaningful to you. Yeah. Um, I do have a question, like what sort of inspired this and drove you to want to create this? Yeah. Um, I wish I had almost like a more, you know, a connects to B connects to C origin story, but the best that I, I can really remember it is like a few years ago really busy working on on other stuff, but um, had this idea as sort of like the NFT hype cycle was going in maybe like 2021, 2022, that, um, you know, I was seeing all of these NFT projects come out that basically just look the same as one another. You, you've seen some people do some interesting experiments, but um, for every experiment, there's, you know, a million copies with a, a different animal or different glasses features or like whatever it is. Um, yeah. And that's all just like very uninteresting to me. I'm like, not to be like whatever, but I just, I don't really care for like a bunch of me too projects. I want to see things that are actually new and different and useful and sort of original. And so um, I don't really know how it came to mind in the first place, but I just thought that the digital collection of colors was like the most fundamental possible NFT project. And um, cause I mean, if you think like what's the most fundamental element of all art, it has mm -hmm. to be either colors or like lines or shapes or something like that. And lines and shapes don't have any non-arbitrary collection of like, you know, mm -hmm. there's an infinite number of lines. There's an infinite number of shapes. Um, there is a sort of defined universe of colors in the digital world. And so it seemed like the singular best like sort of collection. I don't mean to say like this is the best project or anything like that, but <laughs> in my personal view, it's the most fundamental sort of NFT project that you could create. And once I sort it's of had really that, a collection of one of ones too. Exactly. Really cool. Yeah. And, and these that's, days, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's truly non fungible. Um, these days you see a lot of NFT projects come out and like the only thing non fungible about them is the token ID. Like the art is actually the same um, for all of them. And that's not all projects, but that's a lot of projects. And in which case I almost, I wonder like why they're not just fungible. And maybe that's why a lot of them are becoming fungible now and fungible tokens are becoming sort of more popular, like these meme coins on, right. you know, pump.fun or whatever. Um, if there's nothing non-fungible about it, just make it a fungible token and, and have fun with it or whatever. Um, so anyway, it sort of started there with what if you had an NFT collection for for every color on the internet and then um, sort of, you know, quickly finding that the RGB model, which is sort of the universally accepted, you know, collection of colors had 16 million and change. Um, that also introduces an interesting element where most of these NFT collections have you know, 10,000 pieces or a thousand pieces or something in that range. And here you have something with 16 million. And like, what is that supply more similar to like the Bitcoin supply? You know, it's somewhere yeah. in between like these large billion coin fungible meme coins and these 10,000 piece, you know, NFT collections. And so what does that mean? Well, for one, it means that the prices wouldn't be expected, you know, the floor at least wouldn't be expected to get in the thousands or anything. It should always be an accessible price because there's so many of them. Um, yeah. And that wouldn't have worked on Ethereum. So I felt very fortunate, even though I had this idea two or three years ago, I actually don't think it would have worked even really a year ago. It sort of required, it, it had to be built on an L2. Um, and I think Base is great. Obviously chose it for a number of reasons, which you know I could talk about, but most people here probably just 
get it without me having to describe it. Um, it would have been viable on, on something like Solana or something as well, or yeah. Optimism or whatever. But I, I think base, I, I'm really excited to be betting on base uh, by building this. And then, um, you know, smart wallets was also critical. And smart wallets are only like a month and a half old or whatever. And that makes it accessible to everyone, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, I think it's it's not really important if you have sort of a niche art project or whatever, you don't really need to worry about appealing to everyone or making it accessible to everyone because the art itself isn't really appealing to everyone. But if you have something that has the potential to be universally appealing, simple, something as simple as colors, then you sort of have a responsibility to make it accessible to everyone, both in terms of the user experience and the price. And uh, so all of that sort of came together. And then, um, like I mentioned earlier, the one of one names was, I think, a really important addition Very um, mm -hmm. that only okay really uh, that only really came up as we were building it a couple of months ago um so i feel really good that like sort of the uh the base no pun intended or, or the foundation of this project is um is super strong and and again phil was super helpful in in making it that way like yeah, everything is on chain and um we just did it the right way and then avinash who's also on uh, on farcaster you should go follow him at avinash nyack has been uh you know just behind the scenes absolutely grinding to uh to get all of this out and produced and has been uh sort of developing everything you see with the website and everything like that so huge shout out to avinash and uh yeah it's been like i said a ton of fun and uh just excited to see where it goes i love it i think yeah i don't think it would be the same without the naming i really don't i don't think no. i would be as interested in it yeah no. yeah I, it definitely is is a key 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 factor i'd even love a way to add a, other traits like if i'm naming it gm like if there was a way to add something to the description or add something mm. like that points to GM Farcaster or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that well, people could get what the connection is to the name. I'll reveal uh, a little bit of alpha here Ooh. that uh, we alpha. built something in. Yeah. We, we got to cue the alpha song uh, no, but we've, uh, we've got a feature that I don't really expect to use anytime soon, but it is built into the smart contract, which is this concept of emergent traits. And oh. so to your point, if you wanted to, for example, add a URL, we could actually build mm. a trait that would be picked up by OpenSea and everything else that in the future, we just add a field on basecolors.com where you can not only modify the name, but you can modify the URL. And suddenly every color not only has an associated one of one name, but it has an associated URL. And those URLs, okay. we have the ability to make those one of one, or we can make them not one of one. So if you have hundred colors and you want to point them all to your podcast, you could totally do that. That would be great. Um, and then they would be, you know, they would be picked up by OpenSea and everything else. So I'm excited about that. It's not something that I expect to use in the near term, but it gives that flexibility for like, I didn't want to do anything with the original contract that was irreversible and potentially regrettable. So I tried to think of sort of the universe of things that we might want to do in the future. And um, that sort of emergent traits ability where they can be one of one, they could be not one of one. They could be owner modifiable. They could be sort of centrally set. So for example, if we wanted to go and say, hey, here's like a universe of colors or like a subset of colors, for example, um, you know, three digit hex codes. So yeah. not to go down yeah. a rabbit hole, but um, the six digit hex codes, if the first two characters, second, you know, the, if the first two characters, the third and fourth character and the fifth and sixth character are the same. So it's like AABBCC. Yeah it can be abbreviated and this is acknowledged like when you're coding and everything, it's like you can use the three digit hex code and it's so that one would just be ABC. Mm, um, and there's only 4,096 of those out of like the 16 million plus. And so we could centrally go and decide, hey, or even decentrally, it could be decided, but then centrally we would go and implement that trait and suddenly everyone with a three digit hex code would have like a second trait on their, cool. um, their colors, which would sort of acknowledge it as such. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff that can be done. I could talk all day about this stuff, but I, I don't <laughs> want to go, you know, too deep in the, uh, the color verse. It, it can get a little bit overwhelming. I love it. I really love it. It's, it's so much fun. And I love like sort of where you're going with, with it. And it's something that, you know, anyone can ex access, you know, it's very, uh, you know, it's not expensive. It's, it's very, um, accessible and inclusive. Thank you. So, yeah. yeah it's, and it's, it. Because it's different like that, it's, you know, it's, we're not competing with anyone. Um, yeah. and so what's really cool about that is like at base camp, like half the people I talked to, we could immediately find a way that base colors could be integrated into what they were building. 
you know, oh, if you're an okay. artist, you can go like Mike did and you can launch a color punks collection where you can color in your punk. Um, if you are building, you know, you mentioned Moshi cam earlier, I would yeah. love for Moshi cam to have, you know, in their sort of different tabs for picking the frames. One of the frame, one, one of the tabs could just have frames that are colored with all of your base colors and you could oh, choose from cool. that. So there's like, and I think I just saw a tweet before I joined this that, um, you know, the guy who's building, uh, who's building, uh, you know, Minecraft on base, I met him at base camp and he's already talking about, he's launching a feature to integrate base colors for, I think the color of your chat on Minecraft. Ooh, so there's cool. like a million things you can do. And it's like, I look at all these other NFT collections and they're, they're not competitors, they're potential partners. Absolutely. Um, and that's just a, a vibe that's really exciting to build around. I think that's very, um, barcaster ish as well of people yeah. building on top of each other and often permissionlessly. And we see yeah. that a lot with different projects, you know, a project will launch and then somebody will do something not necessarily derivative, but something that builds off of what they did. And I think exactly. that's a little different than what we normally see in the space. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. It's definitely on brand with Farcaster yeah. and, and on brand with base as well. De yeah, definitely. All right. We're going to call it there. This has been an awesome chat. Thanks for popping in. Thanks for being my co-host today. We've had a crazy day. We were, you know, going to do this at 8:30 this morning, and then my travel got it got nuts. Um, but I'm glad we were able to still make this happen. Um, and you know, go check out Base Colors. Um, hang in there, everybody. Just survive. It'll be fine. And uh, we'll be back. I'm going to be back. Hopefully, like let's assume that I get home tomorrow. I'll be back on Wednesday at a regular time, 8.30 a.m. And my co-host will be Toadie Hawk. So thank you so much, Jake. We'll see you on the timeline. And with that, everybody, bye-bye.